everybody. Tiffany here with the Inspire Shop. Welcome to week one of our Identity Loved Creative Bible Study. I'm super excited to dive into this with you and uh, just study what is identity and how does God's love and love for others impact that. So we are going through this kit. If you have one, and you can go through it at your own pace. So maybe take you a little longer, a little shorter, um, whatever works for you. And maybe you think of that. The craft is his banner over me is love. And so we are making little love banners. So here's my sample for that. Uh, you don't even have to make a banner if you don't want to. I think that's what I really love about the kits is you can make uh, whatever you like. And I just like to give you ideas through that, not tell you what to do because it's a very personal thing. And so I'll give you throughout the month little tips on what I did, how I made different aspects of it, and different things that you can make with it as well. So I'm excited to study God's word, pray, and get creative and see how the Lord speaks to you through that. So this week, as we study, our theme is identity and love. So when you think about identity, what is that? Have you ever thought about your identity? What are the things that you allow to define you, right? That's going to be what our identity is. A lot of people find that in our jobs, in our marital status, in our uh, aspects of our family life, where we live, in our neighborhoods, how much money we have in our bank accounts. Uh, there's so many different things that we could find our worth in, but eventually those things are going to get shaken out. And <laughs> what are we going to be when we don't have that? right? Maybe our spouse leaves us. Maybe we go bankrupt. Maybe we get fired from our job. And then who are we? Do we know who we are? Do we know whose we are? Because when we know how much God loves us, that he sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, then we can live and walk in freedom because we know that the things that we do, the things that we have, those relationships that we have, they do not define us. But the God who created the heavens and the earth, who sent his only son to die on the cross and gave us the Holy Spirit to live in us, he is the one who defines us. And when we walk in that power and authority, then we don't have to worry about anything else. Nothing else can shake us when those trials come because Jesus promises that trials are going to come. So when we think of identity, I think it's really uh, important to think about the impact that it has in our life when we don't have uh, our healing that we've gone through and we haven't made forgiveness uh, with ourselves, with others, with God, uh, that's going to be a huge baggage. And so it's a process of working through that. And once we kind of work through those things, then we can say, who am I? And we can uh, move on. So if you think about an analogy, say you are in the airport right? You've got all your luggage, you're getting ready to go, and you go to security. And what do they ask you for? They ask you for your ID, right? Or they're going to ask you for your passport, either one, but you have to show proper identification. And so you're looking through your bags and you're going through it and you have all your luggage there and you can't find it. You can't find your ID. You can't prove who you are. And because of that, you aren't going to be able to get through to go to your gate, to get on the airplane, and go to your destination that you had planned on, right? You're gonna be stuck there at security with all your baggage. And our identity is like that. If we don't know whose we are in Christ, we're gonna be stuck there with our baggage, right? We haven't gone through our healing process. We haven't allowed God to take that from us and given us that healing. We haven't defined who we are. And so we're gonna be stuck there. We're not going to be able to go to the gate. We're going to get on the plane. We're not going to go and be able to do the things that God calls us to do because we're stuck there without our identity, without the things of God. So our identity is a big deal. We need to go through our baggage. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to go through our session one of our Inspire Gatherings or our Creating a Foundation Kit, uh, it's a great way to start kind of processing healing. Um, and see God in that. And so here we're going to focus on our identity and how that plays out once we have already gone through our healing or in that healing process and seeking the Lord. 
So as we are coming to know who we are in Christ, the enemy is going to be coming at us with temptations, right? Jesus was led out into the desert by the Spirit, as it says in Matthew 3, after he is baptized. And so Matthew 4, we find Jesus in the desert and the enemy is tempting him. And there are very specific things that the enemy is tempting him with, right? The first one is wealth. He said, you can have everything here, anything you want, right? Um, and then he is tempted with food. And this is an actual need. Jesus has not eaten in 40 days. He is hungry, right? This is something that he needs. And so this is an actual, uh, just a physical temptation that he needs. And it's not bad, right? He's hungry, but he knows what he's supposed to be doing and he's fasting and he says no. And so then we see he's testing God. Uh, he says, come on, you can throw yourself down from here and the angels are going to catch you because God promises that. And Jesus says, no, that's not what uh, God has called us to do to test him in this. And so we see the enemy bringing about real temptations to Jesus. And we find those in our own lives. And I think one thing to really note in these passages as we read through Matthew 3 and 4 this week is that the enemy also knows scripture, right? Because Jesus is using scripture to combat the enemy when these temptations come, right? There is power in scripture. We are proclaiming God's word and his truth. We have that written down for us now. We are so blessed to have that and have that authority and truth in our lives. And so we see Jesus use scripture to fight the enemy. And we also see the enemy throw back scripture at Jesus, right? The enemy knows scripture. So think if the enemy knows scripture, right? He says, he, he's quoting Psalm 91, 11 through 12, right? He's saying, come on. But Jesus says, no, that is not correct. Because Jesus knows the scripture in context. He knows God. He knows the heart of God. And so he's not going to allow twisted misuse of scripture to lead him into temptation. And so the same is true with us. We need to know scripture. We know the full context of scripture so that when temptation comes at us, because it's going to come, we can combat it with the truth of scripture. It's so important because if you think about the enemy knows scripture, how much more do we need to know scripture? right? It says the enemies know Jesus and tremble, right? They know God. And so how much more should we be trembling? <laughs> because they know that authority, right? It's very, very powerful. Uh, so when we think about our identity in Christ, and when we think about our temptations, it's so important to know what we are tempted by, because we need to know how we're going to combat that because the enemy is ruthless and he's going to come after us. I know for me personally, when I'm like writing these studies, when I first started uh, writing the Inspire Gatherings, the enemy was coming at me with the exact things that I was writing about that I, the Lord had already uh, given me freedom over, that he had showed me how to fight that. But all of a sudden, all these different areas started coming together. And I'm like, God, what's going on? And I had to remember to use the truth of scripture to work through that right? The enemy is ruthless. And so when we see that temptation coming, we need to know how to fight it. A lot of times there's going to be a big issue that comes up and then we're going to have to fight through that and it'll feel like we've made it through. But the enemy is sly and he's going to be continually trying to wrestle with us in different aspects of that same way because there are those areas that are hard for us, that are insecurities, and we have to continually say, no, this is what scripture says. This is who I am in Christ and be able to declare that in those areas of our lives. So we need to see what our temptations are. What are we tempted by? Are we tempted by lust? Are we tempted with anger? Are we tempted with material things? Uh, what is it, right? There's many of those three uh, categories like Jesus struggles with, right? We see the, the Israelites also tempted in those same ways. It's like, <laughs> there's nothing new under the sun. And so there's all, they all fall into kind of like these three categories that the enemy tempts Jesus by in some way. And so we need to know what those areas are so that way we can combat it with the truth of scripture. And so this week, as you are studying through that, 
I know this is a longer week with a lot more questions, but it's really important for us to see that sin, see the temptations that are there in our lives and be able to see who we are in Christ and that power and authority that we have in order to walk in our full identity in Christ as we talk about over the next few weeks. So my prayer this week is that you would be able to see what are you tempted by? Are there any sins that you are already given into because of those temptations? And to go to scripture and say, God, what is the truth here? What do I need to be believing? How do I need to change it? And so I pray that you will be able to wrestle with God through that and be able to uh, believe who you are in Christ in order to go and do the things that God has called you to do because he loves you so much. And this month, that's really what we're focusing on. God's love changes us, changes our identity because he loves us that much. I pray that this will continue uh, just to speak to you throughout the week. And as you create the Lord, I just will show you his love. Have a great week. Cheers.